Okay, so I've got a very special video in store for you guys today, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be lovely. I would call it. Uh, I hope you're sitting comfortably. You know, maybe a, a little mug of cocoa. I'm joking, by the way. I would never call hot chocolate cocoa. Nothing sickens me more. Be that as it may, uh, let's get into the video, shall we? Harry and Meghan in Jamaica are soft power dynamite. Britain is left with quit tonight, William and Kate. Now, the voice I'm using to read the article to you there was based entirely on the photo of the author of the article there, Nels Abbey. Can you see him? I looked at him and I saw the kind of smugness that you only see from uh, Guardian Opinion columnists, am I right? <laughs> and <laughs> I, I looked at his photo and I came up with that voice. I thought, you know, he's got the kind of uh, smugness that can't be backed up. It's like those, uh, what are those uh, smiling newts called? The, the, the axolotls, right? All this bloody smiling. What are you so uh, pleased with yourself about, you cave-dwelling amphibian? You're disgusting. He's a Caribbean amphibian. I'm sorry, I apologize to any salamanders that were offended by that joke. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it turns out I did get his voice 100% right. This is how he talks. In this brown envelope, ladies and gentlemen, is a bribe that's going to go around to all of you this evening. So the sweet content of this brown envelope, I hope, carries the motion for us. So, are we... No! At times like these, it's clear that the Sussexes represent a missed opportunity for a UK that needs friends in the world. Oh, poor Nels. The UK needs friends, does it? Or does Nels need friends? Is Nels projecting? You yes. haven't got any friends, have you? A popular Nigerian adage says, Oh, great. The cow never knows the value of its tail until it is chopped off. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't use any more Nigerian adages. Oh, I know, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be so harsh. It's Nels is probably proud of his Nigerian heritage. I assume that's why he's using a Nigerian adage, because let's be honest, there are better ones. Uh, but, you know, I, I do the same thing. Uh, my grandfather always, when we'd be in a situation like that, you know, when you want to say, you, you want to express that feeling of you don't know what you got until it's gone, right? And uh, my grandfather used to say... Um, uh, and I've passed this knowledge on to my kids. He'd say, you, no, 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 you don't know the value of a butter churn until it breaks. And when, when the butter churn breaks, you can't have buttermilk for breakfast. And you have to phone the carpenter to come and fix the butter churn. And then you understand the value of the butter churn and the carpenter. Wise words. In many tragic ways, this speaks to today's Britain. I'm sorry to keep pausing it so often. I'm going to let it play a little bit longer. We're going to read the article. We're going to get through it. But that expression speaks to never, no, you will never hear me. I, uh, unironically saying that something speaks to something, unless I'm literally saying I am speaking to you, right? It's unacceptable. When do people, when do people adopt these, we've heard, uh, I don't know, American people saying that or something. It's, it's not okay. You cannot say that something speaks to something. It's fucking illegal. From EU membership to competent leadership to low inflation, it seems necessary for Britain to lose things to appreciate their importance. <laughs> ooh, ooh, you snidey little Caribbean amphibian, a frog in the coconut tree. This week, look at Harry and Meghan being fated in Jamaica. They are being fated in Jamaica, right? Very much like when they got married and the people of South Africa erupted in spontaneous joy, street parties, uh, all, all that kind of thing. Similar to those, similar to the scene seen when Nelson Mandela was freed from prison. I mean, what is going on in Jamaica right now? It's like if, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Bob Marley came back to life for, uh, 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 um, uh, cool Runnings came out again. See the soft power skills they carry with them and think about the Nigerian adage. I will never think of that Nigerian adage ever again. It's rubbish. In much of the British media, Harry and Meghan are all year panto villains. 
but around the world they could not be more loved, often for the very reasons that they are despised in the British media. They could not be more loved around the world. It's the Britons who are wrong. Uh, <laughs> People of the world, can you confirm or deny that in the comments here? Uh, particularly if you're a uh, Nigerian or Jamaican. I think I've, I feel I've ingratiated myself enough with you guys, with you fine people in today's video for you to help me out with the algorithm a little bit there. Tell me what you think. Are you fating Harry and Meghan? Uh, the spontaneous street parties in your part of the world in their honor? Anyway, the point is the nasty gammon of, uh, of the UK should just leave Harry and Meghan alone to have a happy holiday at the premiere of the Bob Marley biopic, which uh, you're just jealous you wanted to be there. Admit it. And they're just having a good time with Andrew Holness, the anti-monarchist prime minister of Jamaica, uh, who's said that Will and Kate will never be king and queen of Jamaica. There he is, standing with one of his heavies, his bodyguard, Julian. And, uh, oh, Ziggy Marley's looking pretty well, I think, for 55. Um, anyway, the point is, uh, leave them alone, all right? They are the soft power we could have enjoyed with the increasingly dominant, increasingly self-confident non-white world, especially the Commonwealth. Oh, no. What have we done? You maniacs! Just think of all of that soft power of Meghan Markle's that we could be harnessing right now. Well, I don't know about you guys, but uh, this is one cow that has truly learnt the value of its tail. It's not just that they are royals. Prince William and Kate headed to No Problem Jamaica in 2022 and encountered problems aplenty. <laughs> oh, can you imagine his smug little face writing aplenty? <laughs> aplenty. <laughs> You're not big, and you're not clever, Nels. You haven't got any friends, have you? As their PR fiasco unfolded, they were derided for shaking hands with Jamaican children through wire fences and for motoring Viceroy style through crowded streets in a fancy Land Rover. Yes, they should have taken the more humble option of a seven-vehicle armoured convoy. <laughs> Adobo. Riding around in a Land Rover <laughs> as other people of Jamaica have never seen such opulence. Oh man, it's total gridlock. That's pretty uh, bigoted if you ask me. At the nightmare's end, Jamaica basically handed Britain its P-45, informing the royals of its intention to be a republic and to move on. Oh, you can just hear him, can't you? But they basically handed Britain their P-45. <laughs> Did they? However will we cope? And it's not just that Harry and Meghan are famous. David Cameron's 2015 visit to Jamaica as Prime Minister was seen as another giant clunker. You're a posh spaz. But then again, he did self-sabotage there, swatting away reparations requests. Oh no, how awful, how could he? Urging Jamaicans to move on from slavery. Despicable. And offering to fund the building of a prison to house the Jamaican origin criminals whom Britain didn't want. Well, that all sounds bloody awful. And, uh, you know, he should never have said those horrible things. As a figure of renown, and of course, a descendant of enslavers, no! he could have handled it all better. Still, Harry has something the royals he left behind and the likes of Chillax Cameron can never have. He has familiarity, an ease with difference, and he has Megan. <laughs> In 2012, he also had the love of the UK press and public. He was praised for his warm embrace of then Jamaican PM Portia Simpson Miller and was photographed larking about with Usain Bolt. He has showed himself to be a natural ambassador, a diplomat in a very real sense. One hug from him has, at least partly, dissipated the bad feeling of generations. Now, 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 an old uh, Jamaican adage, you can't have your Jamaica cake and eat it, I'm afraid.
Now, I'm not blaming you, Jamaicans. It's this Nels character who's taken it upon himself to speak on your entire island nation's behalf. But uh, this idea that uh, slavery and the colonial past is something so painful that only a few million dollars could help you get over it. Some reparations, please. Uh, that's one idea. And who knows, maybe that's true. But uh, uh, at the same time, simultaneously, uh, <laughs> a hug from Harry. Oh, well, <laughs> if he gave us a few more hugs, maybe we could forget about the reparations. It's gone some way to, to, to uh, healing generations of hurt, Harry's hug. It is inconceivable that any other royal could have pulled this off quite so effectively, gushed the mail on Sunday. But that was then, before the British media's own version of Orwell's two minutes hate became a thing. Oh, there's nothing more cringes than quoting 1984. And that's nothing against 1984. It just, it annoys me, in fact, that people quote 1984 so much because it's, it is a really good book. But uh, everyone quotes it and thinks that it makes them sound uh, really intellectual and edgy. Ooh, two minutes hate. Mm, only the initiated know what that is. Everyone fucking knows what it is because you're all quoting 1984 and have been for fucking decades. Get over it. Now, much of the press sees Harry and Meghan glad-handing and being glad-handed in Jamaica. Does Nels know what glad-handing is? Because that is what's happening. They are going around shaking hands with people and having their hands shaken uh, <laughs> with, with people who uh, don't give a toss about Harry and Meghan and Harry and Meghan don't give a toss about the people they're meeting. So it, it absolutely is glad-handing. It's just... That doesn't make them sound good, which is the objective of this article, Shall Anyway, I, I, I think I'm overthinking everything. Now, much of the press sees Harry and Meghan glad-handing and being glad-handed in Jamaica, surfing the love at the premiere of the Bob Marley biopic, and they don't much like it. Meghan and Harry pose next to anti-royal Jamaican Prime Minister, who wants to ditch the monarchy and warned Wills and Kate they'll never be king and queen of his nation, as Charles undergoes prostate surgery and the Princess of Wales recovers in hospital, funded the mail. Yeah, you know, with headlines like that, normally I do sort of think, oh, you know, they're being uh, dramatic. But um, I, the only thing you could say is the timing couldn't be worse, could it? I mean, this time it really is bad optics. The hubris of Harry and Meghan's Jamaican photo shoot snorted the spectator. Crown fools, provocative Harry and Meghan spark royal wow as they meet Jamaican politicians plotting to oust Charles as head of state, jeered the sun. Britain understood Harry's value and soft power in 2012. So what changed? Answer, Harry fell in love with and married a black woman. What? When did... Uh, oh, yeah. That could have been a boon for this country, here and abroad. Instead... It's a might have been. And what might have been to our reputational benefit is what has been happening in Jamaica. UK headlines and sour grapes tell you one thing. We messed up and we know it. Meghan was and remains soft power dynamite. And all we have now is the soft power kryptonite of Wills and Kate and the winds of firm that spurned her. Still, that's us. We never miss an opportunity. To miss an opportunity. <laughs> well, it seems we've got some serious reflecting to do as a nation. Mm, some healing. I feel like I need some reparations. I don't know about you. Um, anyway, uh, I think that's about all today. Uh, I am going to be making lots of videos in the next few days. I've, a load of things have piled up and uh, a few of them will be on Patreon. So if you want to check out my Patreon channel... Uh, which is now allowing me to upload videos again, which it wasn't allowing me to do for the few days until the good people over there sorted my problems out for me. Thanks. Uh, what was the guy's name? Mikey. Thanks, Mikey. Uh, anyway, uh, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a like. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Share it around all the social media and stuff. Thanks. <sighs> Bye.